Once upon a time, somewhere in the never-never land of highway engineering, somebody once had the idea that what Northwest Dallas needs is a traffic circle. The result is Tom Field Circle, where Harry Hines Boulevard, Northwest Highway, and Loop 12 all come together. Since it was built, Tom Field Circle has averaged around 150 traffic accidents a year. Not many have been fatal. Last year, for example, only one person died in an accident at the circle. But there's more property damage done here than at any other intersection in Dallas. The next highest intersection, for example, has only half as many as the circle. But Tom Field may bite the dust. The ambulance chaser's dream is scheduled to be replaced in the near future by a new $1.5 million grade separation under the city's high-priority topics program. Requests have already gone to the U.S. government for highway money, and state highway officials say preliminary engineering is well along. The primary snag will be property owners. Surrounded as it is by high-priced commercial zoning, Tom Field Circle will probably generate about as much objection to the grade separation as the city heard when it decided to expand the parking lot at Fair Park. Landowners out here can be counted on to be unhappy when the city condemns their property to build a bridge. And they won't be particularly tickled about having the heavy traffic on Northwest Highway and Harry Hines Boulevard passing some 50 feet over their front doors. The only people who will be happy about the new grade separation are the motorists and the insurance companies. This is Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News at the most expensive intersection in Dallas. Attention. May I help? Yes, we'll listen to your problem and we'll try to help you understand better what your problem is. And if we can make you feel better about your situation, you know, that's what we're here for. One of the major factors is that people are expecting to receive a great deal more from others than they receive at any other time of the year. And in addition to that, they are expecting to be with people that they have been close to in the past, people that they love. So that if a person does not have close family ties, or if the family ties he does have are unpredictable, then he runs the risk of being hurt or exceedingly lonely in comparison with maybe the same kind of situation at some other time of the year. Have you found a difference though between suicide and homicide? Yes, we found a significant difference in that the homicide rate increases during the Christmas holidays. And again, we're not sure of the factors, but what we suspect is happening is that the intimacy in family life during this period of time causes very intense feelings to build and makes family members much more vulnerable to this kind of behavior because the homicides tend to occur in the family relationships. Uh, I went over this last week's calls pretty carefully and found that we had approximately 60 percent of our calls in the suicide category and 15 more percent in the depression category and then we had one person who called in who was considering harming themselves and all their family members. So I say that uh, at least from that one week statistics that there has been an increase in the intensity of the problems that have been called in to us. Is your work limited just to talking to somebody or listening to someone on the telephone or what can you actually do for somebody who, who needs help? Approximately 50 percent of the people who call us receive the help they need at the time of the call on the telephone. The other 50 percent of the people who call in are referred to an appropriate community resource. And this is not just telling someone that there's a place that they can go, even though we have more than a hundred resources kept up to date in our files. We try to help a person become effectively engaged with whatever that resource is. And if this means several hours worth of work on the telephone over a period of time, then we do this also.